Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now August 28th of 2020 and ever since the very end of the Skywalker Saga, a lot of fans have been very curious about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, and Bob Chapek and exactly what things are going to look like in the near future by Disney and Lucasfilm. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the one thing about Disney Star Wars is that, yes, we do know that they are in a phase of damage control and desperation to get the ball rolling again when it comes to this massive franchise. Essentially, what they really want to do is that they really want to bring things to the same exact level as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, when we think about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, what made it so very successful? It wasn't just because of the source material that they were dealing with, it was because of the writers and directors that they chose to really take care of those movies. I mean, it really all started with Jon Favreau, ironically, starting the MCU, who also started this new Star Wars universe with The Mandalorian Season 1. So it is very ironic that Jon Favreau started both universes. Now, given that the Star Wars universe has been a thing for a very long time now, ever since Disney took over, essentially this new universe is going to be a different take on Star Wars. It's how Disney handles everything moving forward without Kathleen Kennedy for the most part. She's only working on The Leslie Show, and that is it, thankfully. So, besides all of this, a lot of fans have been very curious about, you know, everything related to where, you know, Disney went wrong with the sequels and what they plan to do for the future Star Wars films and the TV shows and the overall new universe, right? And exactly what that's going to look like in the next couple of years and beyond. Now, with that being said, of course, what's really exciting and intriguing is that The Rise of Skywalker is one of the biggest Star Wars films that had problems with the production that led Kathleen Kennedy to initiate multiple reshoots and rewrites for the film, both of which took place in 2018 and 2019 by dele deleting dozens of scenes and developing and putting new ones into the film. Now, it's explained, however, that both Bob Iger and Bob Chapek are developing multiple plans in order to create a better future for the franchise. During and after the premiere for The Rise of Skywalker, many interviews were given to the creators and actors of the sequel trilogy movies. Eventually, sometime after The Rise of Skywalker premiere, actor Adam Driver was interviewed about the sequels and Kathleen Kennedy's leadership over at Lucasfilm. Driver went on to reveal that Kennedy didn't want for him to engage in many of Ben Solo's scenes in order to keep that side of his character very mysterious. Now, originally when J.J. was working on the film back in 2018, Driver unveiled that there were tons of Ben Solo scenes and material to work with that Kathleen Kennedy viewed as unnecessary to the film and only would have made the film longer. So, let me stop right here for a second, is that by dialing down on the Ben Solo scenes, Kathleen Kennedy did this because she didn't want the film to be as long and wanted to keep the character of Ben Solo mysterious. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that exploring the character of Ben Solo just a little bit more, I think, would have been beneficial to the character and even beneficial to Adam Driver as an actor. It would have been very interesting to see more of him as a ally or a hero, if you will, in a Star Wars film with dialogue. You know, if you guys pay attention very closely, we really don't have no dialogue of Ben Solo if you really don't want to count the Han Solo and Ben Solo scene, that's where he's transitioning. Anything after that, there's no dialogue. So I think that more dialogue at Ben Solo would have really been beneficial for his character and ha him as an actor, without a doubt. Now, Adam Driver also went on to reveal that he initially had many more scenes done with actor Ian McDermott, who portrayed Palpatine, and that they both went through extensive training. There were even full-on saber duel sequences cut from the film that eventually Kathleen Kennedy had a change of heart in and wanted to do away with those scenes. Driver reveals that he was very upset that he did not get more action as Ben Solo, as he has always loved the character with the scenes he worked on before they got deleted by Kathleen Kennedy. So once again, guys, it really makes you wonder what could have been for Episode 9 if Kathleen Kennedy did not intervene and did not delete those scenes that were going to involve... Ben Solo and Emperor Palpatine. You guys may very well recall, if you guys have been in the loop, is that there were scenes done where Palpatine originally had a lightsaber, or should I say, lightsabers. He was going to use two single-bladed sabers, eventually, that actually detach from each other from a double-bladed one, as he fights Ben Solo on the world of Exegol, 
where the world of Exegol in different segments of the film had different designs as well. Now, Adam Driver, all right, continued to state that he had even more scenes done with Harrison Ford that were actually left on the cutting room floor because of Kathleen Kennedy, and that originally himself and Ford were in multiple other scenes before they got deleted by Kathleen Kennedy. The title of the film originally had more to do with Ben Solo, The Rise of Skywalker, after J.J. Abrams accepted the use of the title by Kennedy, and that the title originally had to do more so with the character of Ben Solo. This was switched over to Rey for marketing reasons by Kennedy in order to fulfill the character of Rey as a Skywalker at the very end of the film. There was even a point in time where George Lucas suggested that Ben Solo would call himself Ben Solo Skywalker at the very end of the film. Driver unveiled that they went through tons of different ending scenarios that they experimented with, some of which were not so different from each other, while others were drastically different in the movie. Driver makes it clear that it was an honor to portray the last Skywalker in the Skywalker saga of this massive brand that was created by George Lucas in 1977, that he had a fantastic time working on these films for the past five years or so. One additional reveal is that Driver admits that the production of the film was out of place because of the reshoots and rewrites done by Kathleen Kennedy, and that the film could have made an earlier release in May of 2019 if they really wanted to push it. However, the major reshoots in 2019 created a major setback. So here's the thing about Kathleen Kennedy is that obviously she has a problem with Skywalkers. It seems to be so, right? Because they originally wanted to make the title of the film more in line with Ben Solo. Honestly, that would have made more sense. I mean, that guy, that character has the Skywalker blood, as Luke says in The Last Jedi. You know, he's got that mighty Skywalker blood. So, when we look at everything of what Kathleen Kennedy has done to the sequel trilogy, it really has been quite reckless. I mean, that's the only thing that I can really say right now, is that it's been nothing but reckless by Kathleen Kennedy. When we think about what she had done with Solo, A Star Wars Story, what she did with The Last Jedi, and what she did with The Rise of Skywalker in different ways, right? Solo was more of a mishandling of the box office results and the overall reshoots because she reshot 80% of the film and she switched directors and writers. That was a big mess. The Last Jedi was accepting of what Ryan Johnson was going to do with the character of Luke and letting him roam flip freely on what he was going to do with that character. And then in The Rise of Skywalker, you had all these amazing ideas that were coming together to make up the mess of The Last Jedi where Kathleen Kennedy just made a big switch and had a change of heart and just deleted all of it and initiated two big phases of reshoots and rewrites for Episode 9, which was the main reason, mind you, as to why it took so long for us to even get a teaser trailer at that for this movie, you know? So, when we think about The Rise of Skywalker, this is a film that had a lot of production issues, and I really do feel for Adam Driver. I mean, I think that he's gonna continue to have a great career, nonetheless. I do feel for Daisy Ridley, though, because it seems like her career options are really lacking lately. Uh, we don't really see her in a lot of films in the near future, at least. Uh, but Adam Driver is getting more roles, uh, thankfully. Uh, because of what he had done with earlier projects and with the Star Wars films. I mean, there's no doubt about it that he essentially is the Harrison Ford of these new sequel movies. You know, you had Harrison Ford as the big-time actor in the originals, and now I believe, honestly, it all has to do with Adam Driver in the sequel trilogy movies. You know, he's the guy. He's the guy that's going to most likely have an increase in his career over this entire decade. So, like I've said before in the past, guys, I mean, when you think about it this way, the fact that they wanted to withdraw from all these Palpatine and Ben Solo scenes, all because they wanted to steer clear from the tones of the prequel trilogy and dialing down on lightsaber combat, it would have been such an amazing, you know, uh, experience to see Ben Solo actually having more sequences in the film, actually fighting Palpatine. I mean, when you think about it, what did Ben Solo as a character, like an, as an actual character, really do action-wise? Now, sure, he got that Knights of Ren sequence, for sure, but I just felt that it went by way too quick. It just breezed right by. You know, it's almost like a scene where you blink and miss it. It went by that fast they could have at the very minimum have had something as epic as the Yoda versus Palpatine duel in episode three. But that's just my, you know, 
story on things. That's just how I view things. So with that being said, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.